we should look into in the Bible to kind of make sense. Why did Jesus subject himself to water baptism? Because the baptism of John the Baptist, the baptism of John the Baptist, anyway, the baptism of, <laughs> you know what I mean. John baptized people to repentance, right? And here comes Jesus, the Messiah, going to John to be baptized by him. So why did Jesus go for baptism when he had no sin to repent of? Yeah, Jesus is the sinless lamb of God. Sinless, this is my English. He has no sin to repent of. And yet, he goes to John the Baptist to be baptized. Let's look into it quickly. Matthew chapter 3. Here goes my big Bible. Oh my goodness. Matthew chapter 3, let's start from verse 1. He said, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. He just told us that John is telling people to repent of their sin, for the kingdom of God is near. Also, interesting. The same John has been pointing people to Jesus. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So why is Jesus coming to John the Baptist to be baptized? Jesus has no sin to repent of. And clearly, even John wondered this because John tried to prevent it. John tried to stop Jesus. He said, no, 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 no. I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? This is Matthew 3, uh, verses 14. So you can see that John the Baptist is clearly objecting. Like, no, 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 I'm supposed to be baptized by you because I've been telling people that there is one coming that is greater than me, mightier than me, preferred before me. He was before me, even his shoelace, I am not worthy to untie. And that person is you. So why are you coming to me for baptism? And John also pointed out that he baptized only with water, water, <laughs> but Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost. So John knew that Jesus ministry, baptism, everything is on a whole different level, a whole different chapter compared to his. And John was a very humble person, just great servant of God, filled with humility. And here comes Jesus coming to John to be baptized by John. So the question still remains, why? Jesus replied, let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. As in fact, it was prophesied, written by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 53 verse 12, it says, he was numbered with the transgressor. He was numbered with the sinners, the, the regular people that are coming to confess our sin and repent and be baptized by John the Baptist, say Jesus was numbered with them. That's a prophecy that was given like 700 years before Jesus ever came into the scene. So Jesus is fulfilling all the prophecy, fulfilling all righteousness. But most importantly, Jesus was identifying with us, with the sinners. I want to bring this home more clearly. Jesus is the one that is going to be the savior of the world. His ministry just started. And you can see through his life that from birth to death, Jesus represent mankind. He was not a sinner. He didn't engage in sin. He didn't commit any sin, but he represented us in what way? Jesus came as a normal human being. Remember, he's God, the son of God. But in, when he entered this world, he came as a normal person. He did not grow up in the household of a king or, or a prince or somebody wealthy, just normal. His earthly dad was a carpenter. So Jesus was able to identify with normal daily life, normal struggles of human beings like you and I. I'll bring you home further. 
Just take, for example, you live in a city, in a state, in a village somewhere, and you are to elect an official, you are to elect somebody to represent you either as governor, as local chairman, or as, as a representative. The candidates, what they do, the people that come and say, elect me, elect me, elect me, what they do, they try to identify with the citizen. So they come to you and they say, elect me because I'm going to fight for good road. I'm going to fight for good hospital. I'm going to fight for a better lifestyle. I'm going to fight for higher minimum payment to make sure you are being paid well by your employer. All these things, whoever is coming to say, elect me, saying, look, I know your suffering. I know what we are facing in this community because I've experienced it. I've passed through it. I'm in it. And if you elect me as your representative, I can identify with all your issues and with all the struggles because I'm in it. That is how Jesus identified with us. I am in it. I didn't commit any sin, but I'm in it. I know your struggles. I know your bondages. I know your suffering. I know your sin. I even identify with you with water baptism. I subjected myself to it, even as the Messiah, even as your Messiah. I am willing to come. God, the Son, I am willing to come. The Bible said that Jesus was made lower than the angels. That means God is up, way up there. Then we have the angels, and then Jesus was made lower than the angels to come and be a representative for me and you to take away the sin of the world. So Jesus was identifying with us when he came to the baptize and said, you know what, go ahead and baptize me. And John is like, uh, you know, I'm pointing at you as the Messiah for these folks. <laughs> but Jesus He's so humble. He's so humble to subject himself to all that he subjected himself to, to save us. He's communicating something to us. God the Father is communicating something to us. Almighty God is communicating something to us. He said, I know what you are going through. I've been there. I was there. I understand. And I overcame. And if you put your trust in me, you put your life in my hand. If you come to me, I will empower you to overcome just like I did. So yes, baptism is all about Jesus identifying with us, with the sinners, because he's going to represent us in a few years. Uh, at the age of 30, his ministry started by 33. His ministry was concluded. So in three years, he's going to be on that cross, nailed to the cross representing us as the savior of the world as the one that is able to save as the one that is the redeemer so yes that's what baptism was all about the baptism of jesus then baptism also symbolized to us as christian it means we also identify with jesus his death his burial and his resurrection. So baptism for us as Christians, in John days, you were baptized unto repentance. You came, you confess your sin, and John baptized you with water. In our days, we first, we accept, number one, we know we are sinners, we confess that we are sinners. Then we accept Jesus as Savior and as Lord. And then after we do that, we get baptized. Why? To identify, symbolism to identify with the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If I say, yes, I'm a Christian, I've received his spirit, and now I'm identifying with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. So it's symbolism. I'm saying this because in the past, I've heard people say, oh, my daughter or my son is badly behaved, especially in America. I've heard it more than once. My child is, hardly, is badly behaved, so I'm going to take him to church and I'm going to have him baptized so that he can become a good boy or a good girl. And it's like, nah, that's error. That is not true. Baptism does not make anybody a good boy, a good girl, a good woman, a good man. No, baptism is symbolism. 
I am identifying with my Lord and Savior. It is God that can change you and me. It is accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, submitting your life to him, allowing his words, the Bible, to saturate your life and yielding to his spirit. And as he walks in you, he transforms you, not baptism. So I need us to know this as Christian so that we don't use baptism wrongly. As Jesus was raised from dead and now he's forever alive on the right hand of God, interceding for me and you. One day we also, when this body expire, we are going to be raised from the dead and we are going to live with him in heaven eternally, forever with our God. No more suffering, no more sorrow, no more disease, no more, no more, no more. These things are true. They are not feebles. They are not fake law. Jesus is alive. One day you and me who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are going to be alive forever and ever. In fact, even the sinners that did not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, they are also going to be alive forever and ever because our body can expire. Our, our soul does not expire. We are forever living. Our soul does not die. That's why Jesus say, don't fear people that can kill the body, but they cannot destroy the soul. So both the sinners, both the people that reject Jesus, the atheists, who, however the title you give them, they are also going to be alive forever and ever, but they're going to be separated from the living God. When they die, they are going to eternal damnation because, not because of their sin, but because they reject Jesus, the Savior the Messiah, the one that makes us righteous before the Almighty God. Because they reject him, they are going to be separated from God. They made the decision. It's not God. They are the one that made the decision. Say, Jesus, I don't want you. God, I don't want your gift of salvation. I don't want your gift of eternal life. I don't want anything to do with you. So basically what the Lord is doing is at the end, when this body expires, the Lord will give them whatever they desire. You say, you didn't want me. You didn't want anything to do with me. No problem. Bye-bye. And then they go into eternal damnation. They go into darkness. They go to hellfire. And they are separated from their creator, the one that loves all of us so much. So please, as I round up this video, be wise. Don't, don't distant yourself from God. Don't reject the gift of salvation. It is pride that makes a human being to say, I am not a sinner. It is pride to make a human being say, Jesus, I don't want you. It is pride that made Satan to disconnect and lose his place in heaven. Don't be like Satan. Don't be full of pride. Humble yourself. Grab the gift of salvation with your full hand and build your relationship with Christ. That's it. Okay, well, that's it. The small question with the orange that brought us to this conclusion. <laughs> Until next time, I'll see you all. Okay, bye-bye.